Hi, I'm Dave Ryan. Welcome to the first ever Chiefs Conference where we at the Mass General Cancer Center will highlight someone in uh, the Cancer Center who published a wonderful paper uh, this month. And so our first person ever is Alice Shaw, one of our investigators in the Thoracic Malignancy Center. Welcome, Alice, and thanks for coming. Today we're going to talk about her paper, which was in the New England Journal of Medicine last week, uh, Krizotna versus Chemotherapy in Advanced ALK Positive Lung Cancer. So Alice, tell us a little bit about uh, this study and why you did it. So this is the first study looking at the efficacy of uh, a targeted therapy, Krizotnib, compared head-to-head -head with standard chemotherapy in a population of patients who have the target of the targeted therapy. So just to give you some backgrounds, Krizotnib is a multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor, best known for inhibiting CMET as well as ELK. Also hits a, a number of other targets, including ROS1. Mm -hmm. Uh, but where its activity has been most clearly established is in the patients who have advanced, out rearranged lung cancer. Tell me a little bit about who those folks are. So, <clears throat> ALK was first discovered actually a while ago, over 15 years ago, in the context of anaplastic large cell lymphoma. But it was actually rediscovered um, about six years ago by Dr. Mano's group in Japan, where they identified a small subset of patients with rearrangements affecting this gene ALK. Mm -hmm. um, and showed that actually this now created an ALK fusion protein which functioned as a very potent oncogenic driver, so driving the growth and proliferation of cancer cells. And soon thereafter, it was demonstrated that uh, having an ALK rearrangement would confer sensitivity to ALK inhibitors like crizotinib. Now, the efficacy of crizotinib in ALK-positive lung cancer has been shown in single-arm phase one and two studies, but this paper reports the first uh, randomized study now comparing crizotinib with chemotherapy. Now, these patients all had advanced ALK rearranged lung cancer, and they all had to have failed one prior line of platinum-based chemotherapy. So this is a second-line study, and the comparator was standard second-line chemotherapy, pemetrexid or docetaxel. So how many people were enrolled? So this is a large, large study um, at many centers, over 100 sites around the world, um, enrolling 347 ALK rearranged patients. Mm -hmm. um, it accrued over about a two-year period. So just to point out that even though ALK is viewed as a relatively rare abnormality in lung cancer, affecting 3 to 5 percent of patients, there are the absolute numbers of these patients are quite large given how many lung cancer patients there are in general. And so this study with three, almost 350 patients accrued in a very short period of time um, and that's how we have the results back in such a short period of time as well. And what did you find? So what we found is that crizotinib clearly is superior to standard chemotherapy in patients who have this abnormality. Um, the primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival, and the study met its primary endpoints, um, showing that crizotinib had a median progression-free survival of 7.7 .7 months compared to chemotherapy at three months. Secondary endpoints included response rate and overall survival, which we'll talk about. Response rate clearly was uh, much better with crizotinib, uh, mm -hmm. tripled that of chemotherapy. So wow. instead of a response rate of about 20%, it was over 60% with crizotinib. And then the very important endpoint actually was uh, patient reported outcomes, so symptoms as well as quality of life and functioning. And I think this is one of the most important aspects and unique aspects of this paper in that it showed really for the first time that this targeted therapy was superior to chemotherapy in terms of improving disease-related symptoms, improving functioning, as well as improving quality of life. And did it make people live longer? You know, it's a very hard question to answer. Uh, you know, this study, uh, of course, allowed crossover, meaning that patients who were randomized to receive chemotherapy, when they actually had disease progression on chemotherapy, they were allowed to cross over to a different study so that they all received crizotinib. So it's a very difficult study to really evaluate overall survival because essentially both of your arms are receiving the drug of interest, the crizotinib. One receiving it as its second line, as a second line therapy, and then the other arm actually receiving it, in most cases, as a third line therapy. So for that reason, we don't see a difference in overall survival. There was, um, in the preliminary analysis of overall survival that was done, there was no difference between crizotinib and chemo. And we really believe that's because the majority of patients who were randomized to chemotherapy did go on to receive crizotinib. And what was the survival? The so median overall survival in either arm was actually about 20 months. In and, second line. And this is from second line, which is quite remarkable. Wow. And what would, normally you would expect, what, More six? Like 
seven, eight, nine months for wow. a second line in studies. And so this is quite remarkable. This, I think, highlights um, how effective these targeted therapies really can be. Now, someone could ask, well, what about the natural history? Perhaps these patients just all have a really great prognosis, and this is independent of the targeted therapy. We really don't think that's the case. Most of the data to date, looking at the natural history of this type of lung cancer, shows that it has a very similar prognosis as sort of the gen general population of lung cancer patients. So I think this prolonged overall survival that we're already seeing really reflects the efficacy of these targeted therapies. So what's next? Where do you go? Uh, do you restrict use in second line? Is it being used in first line? Does it have to be examined with the randomized study in first line? You know, so there is an ongoing randomized first line study of crizotinib compared to platinum combination chemotherapy, pemetrexid, a platinum pemetrexid combination. Um, in that study, there may be results in the next year or so. However, I think this study, along with all the single arm studies that have already been done, um, really shows us that the efficacy is quite high. The response rate is consistently above 60%. The median progression-free survival is eight to 10 months. This is much longer than what we would ever see with single-agent chemotherapy, and actually better than what we typically see with platinum-based frontline chemotherapy. So for this reason, um, you know, the crizotinib is approved in the U.S. as well as many other countries. And in the U.S., crizotinib's label does not indicate anything about prior lines of tre treatment. So that means that crizotinib can be used, can be prescribed in the first-line setting or, or beyond. And in fact, in this country, most um, oncologists will prescribe crizotinib first line. And a lot of this, of course, has to do with the history of EGFR mutant lung cancer, right, where it's right. been very, very well established that EGFR inhibitors are superior to frontline chemotherapy. And it's, it's uh, standard to prescribe EGFR inhibitors like erlotinib for frontline use in EGFR mutant patients. So where are we going now, though, with stages one through three? Say you have locally advanced, and the cure rate in locally advanced is what? 20, 30 percent? 20 to 30 percent. And if I had locally advanced uh, lung cancer uh, and it was ALK mutant, I kind of want to get on a study uh, of this particular drug as opposed to standard therapy. Is there anything that exists? So there are going to be studies, um, intergroup studies, looking at the role of crizotinib in the adjuvant setting, so after mm -hmm. complete resection of stage one to three disease. There also will be um, a study looking at the role of crizotinib in the um, locally advanced setting. So using it potentially as part of an induction regimen as well as in the adjuvant setting after treatment of stage three disease. We don't have any data, the studies haven't even started yet, but it's a very important question whether or not a targeted therapy can improve uh, the cure rate um, in, in earlier stage disease. Now, uh, you uh, are now among an illustrious group of investigators that have ever had two New England Journal uh, of Medicine papers in the same issue. Um, in fact, I'm not, I don't think, uh, I don't know how many people it's ever happened to, but you were senior author on a paper describing why people get resistant right. to crizotinib. So, so just to make it clear, I mean, that's a separate type of lung cancer mm -hmm. with a different rearrangement involving a gene called ROS1. Mm -hmm. ROS1 is related to ELK. Um, right. Actually, they're very similar in terms of their um, kinase domain, and so perhaps it's no surprise that crizotinib is actually able to inhibit ALK as well as ROS1. And so we actually know that uh, in patients who have this type of lung cancer with ROS1 rearrangement, mm -hmm. they're also quite sensitive to crizotinib. The second paper really focuses on the question of why these patients with ROS1 lung cancer might become resistant to crizotinib and shows that in this one particular case, this was a case report, mm -hmm. um, this patient developed a very highly resistant uh, mutation within the ROS1 tyrosine kinase that conferred resistance, um, really high, high level resistance to crizotinib. And this really was the basis for her relapsing very quickly on crizotinib. The reason that I think this paper is particularly important is because it really points us toward the mechanisms of resistance and how we might be able to think about overcoming those mechanisms of resistance so that patients will have another option once crizotinib stops working. So from a philosophical standpoint, and we'll finish with this question, um, are you hopeful about the future uh, in the sense that are we going to find more ALK translocations or ROS or EGFR mutations? Um, and if we do, uh, is the flip side that people are destined to become resistant very quickly from um, developing some mechanism of resistance that we have to come in with another targeted therapy? Uh, is it the two sides of the same coin, one being positive and one being a little bit negative? 
You know, I kind of view them both as positive. I think it's great that we're discovering new oncogenic drivers all mm -hmm. the time in different cancers, not just lung cancer, but certainly there's been a lot of that in, in lung cancer. Um, but you're right, there is this problem of resistance that seems to be inevitable um, to sort of treatment with single agent targeted therapies the way we're using them now. What we haven't talked about is that there are uh, new drugs that actually do target patients uh, who have developed resistance to crizotinib. These are what we call the next generation ALK inhibitors. They're looking very, very promising in early phase studies. These are reported at ASCO showing response rates of over 60% wow. with a next generation ALK inhibitor. So you're basically able to reinduce remission in patients who have become resistant to the first generation ALK inhibitor. Again, that's not a a cure because patients do relapse on the second generation ALK inhibitors as well, but it does, I think, suggest to us that there are these additional strategies that we can hope to develop that will be able to uh, overcome resistance. And we have to start thinking creatively about how not only to define these mechanisms of resistance, but to uh, define better uh, combinations of uh, therapies that might overcome resistance and even prevent the emergence of resistance. And I, I guess you could even say to see response rates in the 60, 70, 80 percent range holds the promise that we're actually going to be curing more people with stage one through three cancer because in the previous era with cytotoxic chemotherapy, if we saw response rates in that, uh, in that range, it always translated into an Im improved cure rate. Right. That's our hope. The studies just have, have to be done. All right. Well, great work. Thanks very much for being the uh, inaugural member here in the, in the Chiefs rounds. And uh, you get an MGH Cancer Center hat, so you can take that home and wear it proudly. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you.